Uh, <laughs> good morning, church. Uh, I hope you had a very wonderful Thanksgiving and uh, ate some really nice turkey, vegetarian turkey, <laughs> veggie turkey. Um, me and my family, we had a great time together, uh, one of those rare time where our daughter KK is just enjoying her day because she has our undivided attention for a whole day. And it, it was great, we, uh, great time, uh, family time. I, I want to welcome everybody who's here. Uh, do we have any visitors here today? Just raise your hand and you can see. Wow, all right, all right. Welcome to Paradise Church, Seventh-day Seventh -day Adventist Church. Um, all of you are online as well. Uh, I heard that we are, um, we are streaming live today. And the reason why I need to mention this is because uh, we haven't been able to stream, uh, stream live for a while. And, and today we are streaming live, so we are welcoming you who are watching online. Um, some of you, it's amazing, guys. It's amazing. This church, the members who are, who are members of this church, even when they leave Vegas, they're still watching the service that, that, that we have here in Paradise. And they, um, as some of you uh, are, have contacted me through social media and saying that why, why aren't you streaming on uh, live anymore? And we had some difficulties, but we are working on it. And today we are glad that we are live. So welcome those who are watching and welcome those who are here in the sanctuary as well. Um, I want to pray before uh, we start. But before I pray, I'd like to mention something. I want to thank all the young people, the young adults, and the youth who have, who have participated uh, during this service, and those who have uh, prepared uh, something to be presented today during the week, a uh, holiday, holiday uh, week. Um, guys, I told, you, I told the young people this, and I'm going to share it with you guys, but I told you guys, uh, I told you on Monday, uh, through social media, Monday, our, our social media, uh, that... Um, Whatever you believe that God has called you to do, you have to do it. No matter who is against you, uh, you have to do it because you are called to do it. And no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, if you believe that you are called to do what you're doing, and if it, and if it is from God, then you have to do it. Just go ahead and do it and you will be blessed. So I want to thank you guys for participating, for being a part of this service. And I understand that I, I have my limitation as well today. That's why I'm going to pray. I have my limitation. I'm not the, the most eloquent or the most elegant uh, speaker or preacher in the world. I'm not even the most handsome preacher in the world, um, though my wife will disagree with that. <coughs> but I, I understand my limitation. But I, I also understand, I'm, I'm convinced that I, in the hands of the one who called me to ministry, my limitation can bring transformation to those who are listening and watching today. So that's why I'm going to, I'm going to pray even right now. Let's pray. Father God, I want to pray. I want to thank you, Lord, for choosing me uh, in spite of my limitation. But Lord, I want to ask you today that you will use me, that you will breathe in me and speak through me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in me. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, our text today is uh, in Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. And, uh, and the verse that you heard earlier is the verse 2 of this chapter. I want to thank Gabriel. Gabriel, where are you, Gabriel? Somewhere? Oh, okay. Yes, Gabriel. Thank you. Thank you. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, it's tough to be up here. I can testify. But thank you, Gabriel. You did a great job. 
Um, so th this text is very, th this chapter is really, really amazing, fascinating. One of the, the most fascinating texts in the Bible. Uh, chapter 15. And if you have a title in your Bible, there, there are some subtitles in the Bible. What is the title of this chapter? The Song of Moses, right? Thank you for talking back to me. The Song of Moses, um, though there is another Song of Moses somewhere in the Bible in Deuteronomy, this one is actually rec recorded as the first song in the Bible. The first song that they recorded, that, they re that, that, they, that, that is written, that is recorded in the Bible. The first song, congregational song. We're talking about congregational song. Now, some people think that they, uh, you know, they've used some, uh, some poem before, like Genesis chapter 1 seems to be like a, like a poem. But this one here is the very first, am I here? Okay, more than a song. Uh, very first congregational song. Uh, that is recorded. So it, it's very important. It's very important and fascinating because uh, if you want to worship, then this, we have to study this, 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 this chapter because this is the first time, this is the first time that they are actually worshiping uh, God as a congregation. So the, 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 the first verse, do I have it here? Next. Okay, this is the, the chapter. The first verse the first verse starts with a wonderful word here. Um, then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke, saying, and I'm going to stop there for now, but I just, I just want to ask, do you have your Bible with you? Or do you have your phone with you? You know, I've, I was thinking uh, during the week as I was preparing this, and I would say maybe one of these days, pastors will, never a will, will not ask anymore if you have your Bible with you. Maybe pastor will ask if you have your phone with you. Uh, if you have an app in your phone, <laughs> but I know you have your Bible with you, I'm not, it's not going to be up here. We're going to read it together. You know, this is one of those times where we can actually open our Bible and read together. Uh, the first verse is, then Moses, then Moses. Something really happened before, again, before I continue. Something happened this morning, actually. So I was preparing this sermon all week studying and researching and doing all of this, you know, those things that you don't want to know about. But um, I was using another software, a software, a very expensive software that pastors are using and scholars are using. And, uh, and I was using that software to prepare the sermon and they were supposed to put all the slides together. Uh, you know, the, the software is supposed to put the slides together. But this morning, as I was trying to look at the slides, they only put part of my sermon in slides. So I had to rework my sermon just this morning. It was so stressful, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> but praise God, today, I just wanted to show you that so that, um, that you guys know that uh, God is working and, and uh, He's blessing. But today, we have this, and we can read together, then... Verse 1, then Moses, the children, and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke, saying. The word then is very important because it, it is used to locate or situate an action uh, in time. Uh, something happens, then another thing happened. Or, or if something happens, then Something will happen. Another thing will happen. So that, that's the word then. So this word then alone in verse 1 is telling us this morning that something must have happened before this chapter. Are you still with me? Something must have happened before chapter 15. And actually, it's, it's again one of the most amazing story in the Bible that happened in chapter 14. And you can believe me because... 15, before 15, there has to be 14 somewhere. And 14 is just the, the chapter before, uh, uh, before 15, and it's called the Red Sea Crossing. Uh, this is such an amazing story. I love this story. Why? Because here is a people for 400 years, 400 years, about 400 years, maybe four, 450, somewhere in there in that ballpark, uh, of being slaves. Being, uh, being in bondage in Egypt. And um, just as promised, just as prophesied by, by, uh, by Joseph, 
Joseph said, God will remember you guys and will come and free you out of this bondage. So God, just as prophesied, just as promised, he came and freed these people in an amazing way. Um, they, 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 as, as, um, as, as Joseph, Joseph prophesied before he died, they had this experience of emancipation, of freedom, and of liberation. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. You see, when you worship, you worship because of something that happened before. You, you have to have an experience first, then you worship. Which means you have to have an encounter with the person you are worshiping. It's not just coming like, okay, let's worship and just worship without knowing who are we worshiping. You have to have an experience and an encounter with the person you are worshiping or the thing you are worshiping. Then you can worship. And that's what happened here. That's what the word then means here. Something happened and they are worshiping now. Uh, something happened to them and they are worshiping now. So it doesn't matter it, what it is that you are worshiping or who it is that, it, that you are worshiping, you have to have an experience before you are worshiping uh, something or someone. You can, some people are worshiping money just because they had experience with money and they enjoyed it, so now they are worshiping money. Some people are worshiping fame. They had just a little taste of fame and now they enjoyed that experience and they're worshiping fame. They can't get over it. They can't, they can't forget about it anymore. And some people are worshiping other things and some, uh, should I say this here live? Yes, some, something on the internet, pornography and all of that. If you, if you are worshiping that just because you had an experience with that, and I'm talking to the young people right now, whatever you are experiencing and trying, you end up in some way worshiping it. And that's what happened in, this, in these days. There were so many idols. There were so many idols. Why? Because they, they chose to, exp to have experience with the idols uh, back in those days in, in Egypt as they were saying that there are some uh, idols, there are some gods that are taking care of our crops. So we are worshiping this. It's because of this God that we have this. So we are worshiping this God. And that's what happened. But the important lesson here is that when you are experienced, when you are encountered, when, when, you are, when you have an encounter with God, with someone or with something, you end up worshiping that person or that thing. Or should I say, you don't worship until you have an experience. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. You know, it was an amazing story. God wanted to prove that he was the only God and that no other gods should come before him. So in Exodus chapter 12, verse 12, God is saying, you know, all these gods that you have, and you can verify this, all these gods that you guys have here in Egypt, I'm going to show them. I'm going to actually, he used the word judgment. I'm going to judge them and show them that I am God. And that's what happened. The Israelites experienced that. God introduced himself to the Israelites. They forgot about all of this, this, uh, this relationship with God because the last time they had a, 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 a healthy relationship with God, it was with Joseph. And after years and years and years, some of them must have forgotten about God. Some of them must have said that their condition is actually a fate and that they can do anything, they can do anything about it. But I want, that, but I want to say something to, to somebody today that you should never let your condition dictate your 
position. Why am I saying that? These Israelites were called to be the people of God. That's their position. But their condition was slavery and bondage. And some of them were for, forgot about all of this relationship they had with God. Not all of them, because we, obviously we have Moses. And actually, he, the, the, the slavery and the bondage was so hard. The, 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 the struggle was real, was so real, neighbor, uh, that, that, they, uh, that they cried out, just cried out. Not even to, to whom, they, because it's been so long. And even if um, our sister White is talking about few of the people were still contemplating and, and, and thinking about um, uh, calling God, they were just fed up of all this hard work. But their condition is not their position. They've been called to be the people of God. And this was the time that God chose to come into history and change their lives. And you know, anytime you are going through some struggle, anytime the struggle is real, you have to understand that that's just your condition. That's just the, that is just the condition you are in right now. That's not your position. As a matter of fact, Brother Paul, uh, who wrote the book of Acts, uh, who wrote the book of Romans, agree with me that you are called to be heir of Jesus Christ. That's your position. That's my position. My condition, I'm just going through it because that's what, that's what life gives me now. But my position, I am the, I am a part of the family of God. But they had this experience. They had this experience and it changed everything. God took them out of the hands of the Egyptians and brought them to the desert. Now, the desert is a very interesting place in the Bible. It's, it's used left and right in many stories, right? And I'm talking about the desert, not dessert. Though, though, though that one is also another important word for some, maybe, <laughs> or for all of us, uh, especially during the holidays. Uh, but they, they, he snatched him out of the hands of the Egyptians and brought them to the desert, and they were wondering, you know, God, God chose the easiest way. He didn't even tell them to go another way so that they won't fight. He, they said, okay, go the, this way, and it's a desert. And it's tough to live in the desert, especially back in those days. And, and we, we live in the desert. We know what desert is. There are some, there, there are some um, rattlesnakes. There are some, you know, different kinds of things here in Vegas. Um, um, but they were, they, were, they were snatched out of the Egyptian, brought into the desert, and here they are just at another place where it's another condition, that con the condition is not maybe, maybe a little bit better, but not, a, not, not the best condition. But still, it doesn't matter where you are as long as you know who brought you there. It doesn't matter where you are as long as you are sure who brought you there. So uh, God snatched them out of the Egyptians and brought them into a place, a desert place, where it was cold during the night and, and too hot during the day. It doesn't matter where you are as long as it is God who brings you there. You know why? Because he provides. He, provide, he provided something that will warm them in the, in the, during the night and some a shade during the, uh, during the day so that they will just leave, uh, so that the, their condition will not, will not uh, wear them out. That's the story. That's the wonderful story in chapter 14. But now they were, they were in front of the, the Red Sea and they were waiting, what is this? And, and complaining again, what is this? Another condition. And, and God said, but remember, remember, remember we talked about this. Condition does not dictate your position. But they were there in front of the Red Sea and heard that Pharaoh and his army is coming. 
And he, this is something that is not a part of this uh, sermon, but I have to tell this. This is a side note. This is, I think it's really good. Uh, so I'm sharing it. You know, the, the, the abuser in an abusive situation, in this situation it is Pharaoh, it is Egyptians, when they don't have the abused anymore, they feel this lack in their, in their, inside of them and they still want to go and get that person to, to, you know, to, to, to abuse that person. Uh, this, this happens in abusive relationship. Abusive marriage, abusive, you know, uh, parents and, uh, and uh, children, or abusive, or even, even maybe um, alcohol or, or whatever. In a relationship, the abuser needs the person, the, 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 the more frail person to be there to, to, to be abused. This person cannot go on and live his life without this person because the person was so used to abuse that person. And actually, the Israelites said, we want to go back. We want to go back to the abuser because this condition, we can't just accept this condition. And that happens also in an abusive relationship. The abused, this, this is called codependency. Elder Ron? This is called codependency in, psycho in psychology. You, the, abuser, the abused was so used to be abused that the person cannot live without the abuser. This is why we have a, such a hard time to get a person out of an abusive situation because of this codependency. They depend on each other. That's just what they feel. And it's, and it's sad. It's, it's horrible. But that's just what happens. And this is what happened here in the story. The, 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 the Israelites were like, no, we were so used. Bring us back to the Egyptians. Why are we leaving us here? Why are you bringing us here out of the Egyptians and here in this condition? Now the Red Sea and, and, and they're coming to kill us. We should have just stayed in Egypt. Moses said, calm down, calm down. Your condition does not dictate your position. God has called me to deliver you out of the hands of the Egyptians, and I believe that God will do that. And God said, Moses, why are you, why are you complaining? Why, why, why are everybody complaining? Why, what's going on here? And God said, just stretch your hand and uh, move on, and, and uh, the, the sea is going to open, and you, you will see. You know, for God, it's just normal. Uh, they were like, you can read in chapter 14, God said, Why? Why are you guys like this? For God, it's normal. I brought you out of that situation. I'm going to bring you to a better situation. Not now, maybe not right away, but I will bring you to the promised land. And you see, that's, that that's that, that also can be your story. Your story, sometimes you're in a situation, in a condition, and it's a little bit hard, and you, you get over that, and then there is another thing that is happening, and you're like, what is this? Why, oh, why? Why God? But God, the one who took you out of that condition, will bring you to the promised land. It's might not, it might not be now. It might not be right away. But he will surely bring you to the promised land. And that's what happened here, and, and it's amazing. I, I think Hollywood uh, wouldn't have had uh, such an inspiration like this, but the Bible is, is just really, if they made a, a real movie, a, a real good movie of this, uh, actually, it's, this is really better, but you can just imagine just the, the, the ocean opening up, and then they were just, Moses coming, uh, marching and, and stepping down in the ocean and raising his hand and everything is open and it's just majestic and just, I don't know how to explain it, but maybe you had to be there <laughs> to understand. <laughs> but, but, but they were walking on dry land and, and now the Israelites were complaining, just uh, understanding little by little that this is something real and this is not the usual thing. This is a huge a huge experience that they are having with God. You, they have never seen something like this, especially with their condition for 400 years, being, being in bondage, and now they are, they are walking on dry land, and the sea is, open, is, is wide open, and they're just walking. And uh, <laughs> um, in Hollywood, as, as so many, you know, they, they, they have this imagination, and if you've, if you've seen the, uh, I, I even forgot that movie, but 
Moses. Prince, prince of what? Prince of Egypt. Okay, so, so you're watching. So, <laughs> what is it? Ten Commandments, or actually this one is Prince of Egypt. And as they were walking on dry land, they can see whales <laughs> and, and stingray coming. That's the, that, that's the Hollywood imagination. But the, the point is, it was majestic. God did something great despite their unbelief because God has called them to be his people and has promised that he will lead them to the promised land. So he will do it. He will do it. Might not be now. Might not be right away. But he will do it. Right after that, that powerful experience, Moses stood at the other side right now and, and Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's uh, chariots are, in the, are also riding on dry land in the midst of the sea. But God said, uh, actually, uh, there is a poetic, a very a poetic way that uh, is recorded in the Jewish ancient uh, uh, documents that's saying that God came down and his, his shadow just disturbed the view of the, of, of the, the, the men who were riding their chariots, and they couldn't really drive really well on the freeway, on the, you mean in the, <laughs> the dry land. And, and, they, and, and they, couldn't, they couldn't catch the Israelites. You know, I've always, I've always wondered when I was a kid, when I was a kid, so if they were walking, right, there's thousands and thousands of Israelites walking, how come the guys in their chariots, you know, two horses maybe, or one horse, couldn't catch them. Like, how come? Like, they're just walking, and they're kids and, and people with many kids back then. And um, how come did, did, didn't they never catch? But that's what happened. God actually used uh, the pillar of clouds uh, that, to disturb these, uh, these chariots, the chariots of uh, Pharaoh's army, and they couldn't, they couldn't catch the Israelites. God did everything right, correct, and at the right time. It's amazing. You know, when you, when you think about your past, how did I cross that Red Sea, Lord? And then you realize, wow, it was correct, it was right, you did it right, it was at the right time, and you did it. Have, have you ever had that experience before? Have you ever had that experience? Before? Like, you just look back and you're like, oh, Lord, you did it again. You did it right, you did it correct, and at the right time. Moses stood up and God said, okay, uh, raise your hand again, raise your hands again, and it's going to close. And, and this, the, 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 the Pharaoh's army was just buried under the sea, and all the Israelites saw that thing through, uh, with their eyes. They saw their pro problem buried in the depths of the sea with their own eyes. That's what God does. That's what God does, people. He snatched you out of a situation that Satan has, 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 um, has put in your ways, and he will bury those situations in the depths of the sea. He will do it the right way, the correct way, at the right time. Amen. And you will see it. He will open your eyes and you will look back and say, oh, there's the Red Sea. Oh, no, it's, it, there's no dry land anymore. Actually, everything is buried. And you're like, oh, God, you did it again. But actually, that's the next point of this, this sermon today because this is, this is the reason, this is the, this is the why of the experience or, yeah, this is the why of the worship. This is why they were worshiping, but Moses couldn't stand and used his, his, uh, his knowledge. He went to the University um, uh, of uh, Egypt, and uh, he learned about uh, arts. And, um, and if you read, if you read your, um, your history books and uh, archaeology books, you'll find out that the, that the Egyptians were really good in music. And, and, and um, they were really good musicians. And, and Moses went there, went to that uh, university, and suddenly it just came to him. And, and he was like, no, I can't keep this. 
I can't keep this. And in a spontaneous way, Moses just thought, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. You see, when something happens to you, and you know that it was God, that it was not you, you know your limitation, it was God, it's not you, you can't help it but praise God and worship God. You see, we don't come to church. We don't come to church just to be a church. We, just come, we, we don't come to church because we've been going to paradise for decades. We don't come to church because I, I got friends at paradise and I'm going there. We come to church because we've experienced God during the week. And we come here on Sabbath and we can't help it but sing together, testify about his goodness, and pray together, smile at each other, for real, <laughs> smile at each other, and love one another. For real. <laughs> because you've experienced God during the week. And you can't help it. It's just natural. It's not something like, I'm going to force my way today. Pastor, I love you so much. Uh, though I had some problem with you last week. But, but I love you so much because i got to be here at church today. It's not about that, people. It's because you've experienced God during the week. That when you come here in this sanctuary... You look back and you see the Red Sea closed and all your problems and all your, your, the burdens that you had in your mind buried. And you come to church and say, brother, I had an issue with you, but I prayed about it. Please, can you forgive me? Sister, uh, I don't know how to talk about it, you know, but please. Let's, let's, let's pray together. Can, can we pray together, brothers and sisters? And, and believe me, because God has took you out of your situation during the week. When you come here, you will be able to see with your eyes that the Red Sea has been closed and your burdens have been buried in the Red Sea. You can't help it. Spontaneously, Moses started to sing and the children of Israel started to follow and uh, by the way Moses is a really good leader it's very rare to have a leader who can lead and can write a song I don't know if, uh, if, if, if our this is not a political comment but I don't know if our elect president can write a song or not but it's very rare or even our previous president, it's very rare to have a leader who can also write a song. And this song was actually very important in their story, in their history. Why? Because the women took a part of this song and said, Moses, I think we can repeat this and make this our chorus. Okay, let, let, let's repeat this. Okay, so they will repeat it, and the children were learning the song, and they've never forgotten about the experience that they had at the Red Sea just because of the song. They sang about it. But something is special about this song. I will sing to the Lord. This is the first time in the Bible that the word Lord is used in a short, in a short the short version of the word is used here. Usually it is used Yahweh. And I'm only saying that because I read it in Hebrew, and I love Hebrew. Um, here, it just says, Yah. And this is used only in songs and poetic uh, writings. So you can see this form in, in uh, Psalms or in Songs of Songs, as they are using this. But why, 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 this, why is this used here? Now, this is very, I, I, I love this part because I can move on right now. That there, right here. I love this song because this is the who of the worship. We know the why of the worship. What is the why of the worship? Because you had an experience with God. What is, who is the who of the worship? It is God. It is Yahweh. Why, why, why the Lord was used here? Why the Lord was used here? So back in those days, 
in Egypt, they were worshiping hundreds of gods. They had a god, uh, god of the sun, god of the moon, god of the agriculture. They had a god of, uh, god of um, love, god of this and god of that. God here and there, god, god, god here, god there, god everywhere. Um, so Moses, Moses decided to put this in the song to remind them that their God is different from all these other gods. Yahweh is God's first name. That's what they used it in the, in the Hebrew uh, community. Yahweh is God's first name. So when they say Yahweh, that means that it's the Lord who created everything. Because in this time, just to say God doesn't mean that it is the God in heaven. If you say God, they would ask you, which one? The God who takes care of the pets? The God who takes care of this? Or, or what are you to, which God are you talking about? But so, so Moses said, okay, I will sing to the Lord, Yah. I will sing to Yah because he is the one who created everything. He is different from all these other gods. You might know the God of love, but my God is love. You might know the God of this, but my God created that. And, you know, people were worshiping the sun, people were worshiping this and creature, uh, creatures, but Moses wanted the, ch the children of Israel to know and always remember through this song that they were worshiping the one and only true God that exists, um, that exists. So, so that's why he chose to use the first name of God, the Lord, for he has triumphed. It was, it was showing, it was to show to these Egyptians that he is the only God that can exist, that should be worshipped. And Moses and the Israelites, because of the experience they had, they understood that it was the Lord who did all of that. Not Moses, not them. It's very important. Why? Because if you look at chapter 14, verse 31, and if you still have your Bible, I hope you do. Uh, so it says, Thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord. And he is what? Servant who? Moses. So usually when people, when, when a nation have conquered or have, have vanquished another nation, they will talk about their hero in their song, in their victory song. They will talk about, okay, our hero did this, he led us into this. But notice in this song, there is not any single time where Moses is mentioned. Why? You want to know why? Because they knew. They knew that it was the Lord who did it. And they wanted everybody to know about that, not only their children, but all those who could listen to this huge, this mass choir singing about the Lord. It is the Lord. Nobody else. Not the God of the sun. Not the God of the moon. Not the God of this. Not the God of that. It is the Lord, the ruler of the universe. He made it clear. It is the Lord. So why are we worshiping? And there might, might be many other reasons, actually. But at least in this story, in the, first, in the first congregational song, it shows us that they were worshiping because they experienced. They had an experience, an encounter with God. And who are we worshiping? We are worshiping God, the one we encountered during the experience. It's related. The one we encountered during the experience, it is God. I want to go back here and read you this, this beautiful quote of E.G. White. Talk hope and faith and thanksgiving to God. Be cheerful, hopeful in Christ. Educate yourself to praise him. This is a great, great remedy for diseases of the soul and of the body. You have to educate. That's what, that's what uh, really, uh, I really like that, that part. You have to educate your, yourself to praise him. 
you have to educate yourself to praise him. Yes, it has to be spontaneous, but there was a time, there was a time where, where we've been taught that actually expressing, expressing our emotion toward God is not that, that good. Now, I have to, I have to make this, this, this comment here that I have been taught. I mean, I, I've been raised in this church, so I, I've been taught a lot of things, but I've been taught that... that um, that when the Bible says heart, it actually talking about what? About the mind. Have you ever heard about that, that, that uh, theory? Yeah, Jeff? Okay. Um, yes. And I believe that. I preach that. And you can hear it from, you can hear it every now and then. Until I studied, actually. Until I got, until I got the, uh, the academic, you know, education and, and learned about the original language and studied. And I found out when God said, I will put my, my law and my commandment, my new covenant in your heart. He was actually talking about, yes, mind, not the organ, but mind that, that, is, uh, that is talking about the intellect and also the part of the mind that is dealing with emotion, feelings. Not only the intellect, not only the emotion, but here is the problem. The problem is, folks, that uh, nowadays people are either going just emotion or either going just the intellect. And, and some, of these, some of these are just the res- result, of, result of like, oh, we are tired of just dealing with this. Let's just deal with something else. And that's not a good reason to do something. You have to do something. You have to do, the thing that you need to do is the thing that you believe that is in the Bible. It's not because you are tired of doing this, that, oh, I'm just tired. Let's do something else. You see? Uh, uh, but the thing is, so when, when God says, when God talks about heart, it's not only it's not the organ, evidently, but it's the brain that talks, that, that deals with intellect and that deals with emotion as well. Why? Do you want to know why? Because God wants everything, not just your intellect. He wants everything. He wants you. He wants me. So sometimes you don't feel like doing it, but he still wants you. Sometimes you don't understand it intellectually, but he still wants you. So if you don't understand something, it's not a reason why to not come to church or to not love somebody or to just stop believing in God because he still wants you. If you don't feel anything, it's not a reason to stop believing in God because he still wants you. Like I said before, it might not be now. It might not be right away. But for sure, he will lead you to the promised land. There are something that you might not understand now. There are something that you might not feel now. But for sure, if he was the one who took you out of a situation, he will bring you and lead you to the promised land. Isn't that wonderful? Have you learned anything new today? (laughs) Amen? All right. Um... So Yahweh, Yahweh is the God, is the who of the worship. You have to know who you are worshiping. It's not your video game. It's not alcohol. It's not, it's not even your spouse. It's God. So you're asked to love your spouse and, and, and respect your spouse. It's God. It's God. So um, now the third one is hope. This is the result of the worship. The why of the worship experience, the who of the worship, it is God. Now, the result of all of that embedded in the song is hope. And we can go together, actually, uh, to the verse 17 and verse 18. And you will see something wonderful here. 17, are you with me? Amen? It's it's also here because it's, uh, but it's, it's so tiny, right? Can you see? I'm sh- you don't have to lie. You can't see it from there, right? <laughs> All right, 17. You will bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, in the place 
O Lord, which who has made? You have made, O thou, for your own dwelling. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. And actually, before we get there, I want to, just before that, the verse 12 and, and 13 and, and 14 and 15 and 16, he's talking about, you know, because of our experience, because of our, our experience, and we believe that it was you, God, who did this, our enemies will be fearful. Why? Because they know that it was you, not us. So, this is hope for the future because they know that they will have many other struggles. But because of the experience that they just had, they sang in their song that we hope and believe that you will still be with us. That's why our next enemy will be fearful. It is the same thing. I, I, I don't know if you guys understand this, but, but for me, it, it means to me then that if I had a problem before and I see the Red Sea closing and my burden are, are buried, I'm hopeful that my next challenge will know that God will still be with me. You see, that, 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 that's, that, that's, the, that's the logic way of, of going through the, through the text here. And it's it, it just simple, and it, it seems to be simple and easy, but you know when you get to the situation, you're there again, and why God, this, you know, going back as a circle. But still, worshiping God builds hope for the future. That's why we come to church. We come to church because we believe that someday soon, from the east, Jesus will come and will take us home. That's what we believe. That's why we're here. It's not because uh, we have 28 fundamentals, uh, though that is very important, and we are teaching that. Um, I'm finishing some of my lessons with one of our young people here about the 28 fundamentals. Um, it's not because of... It's not because of we, we get to wear nice clothes and shoes and come to church and, you know, just smile all the time and say happy Sabbath. It's not because of that. It's because we believe the same thing. We believe that Jesus is coming back soon. And that's why we come here, Seventh-day Adventist. We come here because he's coming back. I can't wait, by the way. I can't wait. But I want to experience I want to have this experience here so that I can testify, sing my song, and tell everybody that I saw God, He did it in my life. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm standing here. That's why I'm preaching about God, because I saw Him in my life, and He will lead me home. He will bring them. Remember at this time, we're finishing. Remember at this time, there was no sanctuary yet. But notice the words that he is using. Notice the words that he is using. You will bring them and, and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, in the place, O oh Lord, we, we, which you have made for your own dwelling. Who made it? The Lord, who made the sanctuary on earth. He inspired them to do it. But this here says that God has made a sanctuary. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. It seems like Moses had a vision. Because of their experience, he was inspired. And maybe God has shown him at this time that someday there will be a sanctuary that God himself has made. It's not the sanctuary that they, 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 were, they will do later in the story of Exodus. It's not that one. But Moses somehow was just hopeful, full of hope because of the experience that they just had, saw further ahead and said, oh, someday God, God will invite us to get in his sanctuary that he made by, by, by his hands, with, with his hands, and we will be there. In verse 18, the Lord shall what? Reign forever and ever. 
This is talking about a much further future. A much further future. But it brought hope to them. It brought hope to them because they saw it with their own eyes. They experienced it. And they acknowledged that it is the Lord, not them. And then they said, we are hopeful that someday we will live with the Lord forever and ever. Because he will reign forever and ever. What is wonderful is that they had a king who was Pharaoh. And their position in that kingdom was not that good, to say the least. They were slaves. But as soon as they saw that there is a king that will never die, as soon as they saw with their own eyes that there is a king up there that usually the people nowadays call the man upstairs, There is a king who will take care of everything just like what he did to the Red Sea. And he will prepare a sanctuary, a place, a safe haven where everybody will will be happy and and live together because it will be paradise. And that's, that's what the experience did to them, to Moses and the Israelite accepted it. Worship is the result of an experience. An experience that one had with the Lord. Worship is dedicated to God and God alone. It reassures us, brings us hope that he will establish his kingdom forever. So we come to church. We come to church because we believe, because we believe that he will come soon and take us home. There is no greater feeling or even knowledge, talking about emotion and intellect, intellect or knowledge to, uh, that, than to know and feel and reassured that Jesus is indeed coming. It's not fake. This is not a fake video. That's, that's, that's one of the terms that is used in, uh, in social media. This is not a fake video. This is for real. Jesus is coming soon. Have you experienced Jesus? Have you had time to experience having Jesus as your personal Savior? If you have, then you must know. You must have known because of that experience that he He is the one who brought you out of your situation and will lead you to a better place. If if you've experienced him during the week, you must know, you must know, Brother Alan, that that he, he brings hope in your heart and your mind knows for sure that he is coming soon, that he is coming soon. This lady, I love her works. Open the door of your hearts and let him enter. Him here is Jesus. And you will have such a thanksgiving as you never experienced before. So we just had thanksgiving. But some of you have come here today and have debated with yourself for a while. Will I give my heart to Jesus or not? I want to leave with you, I want to leave this word with you. Open the door of your hearts and let him in. Let Jesus in. And uh, I missed something here, but that's technology. (laughs) Technology is giving up on me right now, but uh, my, my singer knows what to do. Open your heart, open your heart. When he talks about heart here, once again, it's not only the emotional part of you. It's not only the part of your brain that deals with feelings. It's also the part that deals with the intellect. You have to logically and with reason understand that you are choosing to be with God. Not just by feeling. I'm not calling to just your feeling. Nor I'm not calling to just your intellect. I'm calling to you, the whole of you, because he wants the whole, he wants your whole, 
because he wants you. So I'm not calling today that if you, if, you were, if, you, if you had an experience and you were like, okay, that was a really good experience, I felt it, Lord, I wanna give my life to you now. No, no, I, I, and I'm not also calling, uh, calling to, to, to you guys who are studying and keeping on studying and saying, man, I really understood that, Lord, and I wanna come to you now. No, I'm calling to you because I'm calling to the whole of you, the whole part of you, whole part of your brain that deals with emotion, that deals with intellect, that deals with memory, that deals with everything. I'm calling to that, your reasoning, that Jesus is calling you. He wants to, to come, he's, he's standing at the door and knock. And if you are willing and open your hearts figuratively, he will get in and he will reassure you that that experience that you had was not just emotional. That experience that you had was not just intellectual. That experience that you had was everything. Was everything, it took everything of you to accept that Jesus is your savior. And I promise, I promise, I promise. You can take my words, but actually these are not my words. This is, this is his words. He says, you know, I will give you hope. I will give you peace. And sometimes you might face some other situation in your life after another, but, but you know, it might not be now, it might, but it, might, but it might not be right away, but be reassured that he is coming again. And that experience that you had, that, that whole experience that you had will bring you to a state where you are hopeful that he will lead you home. He will lead you home. There is a song that uh, my brother, my friend here will sing right now. I'm going to give a call while he's singing as well. But um, this song is very interesting. You know, I just heard this song maybe a week ago. But he, he loves this singer and he loves this song. And it's just powerful. The title is Clear the Stage. And you can start uh, playing uh, and singing. Clear the Stage. Why are we singing? Why are we worshiping? Why are we here? Why don't we just clear everything? Clear everything out. And just be ourself and give our whole self, the totality, everything, the entirety of our self to God. Clear the stage and set the sound and lights ablaze If that's the measure you must take to crush the idol What is it? Jerk the pews and all the decorations too Until the congregation's few Then have revival We need that revival Tell your friends that this is where the party ends Until you're broken for your sins You can't be social Seek the Lord and wait for what He has in store And know that great is your reward So just be hopeful Cause you can Sing all you want to you can worship all you want yes, to. Yes, you can. Sing all you want to. You can come to church as many times as you want to. Sing all you want to. You can do all these things. still get it wrong. You can still get wrong. Worship is more than a song. Because worship is more than a song. It's something else. It's something. You have to be real with God. You have to have experience. Add that experience with God and know that it's God and bring that hope in your life. Take a break from all the plans that you have made and sit at home alone and wait for God to whisper. Beg him please to open up his mouth and speak and pray for real upon your knees until they blister. Shine a light on every corner of your life Until the pride and lust and lies are in the open Then read the word and put to test 
things you've heard Until your heart and soul are stirred And rocked and broken Cause you can sing all you want to Yes, you can sing all you want to Sing all you want to and still get it wrong Your worship is more than a song You know what, because it's not, it's not because of what you do, it's because of who you are. That's, that's what Jesus wants, you. And He will we transform you. We must not worship something that's not even worth it. Clear the stage, make some space for the one who deserves it. Cause anything I put before my God is an idol. And anything I want with all my heart is an idol. And anything that I stop thinking of is an idol. You can just continue that progression, but I'm, I'm going to give a call. And anything that I give all my if you know, love right is an now, idol. Jesus is calling you, not just your emotional side, nor intellectual side, all of you. You just know. Would you mind standing up? Would you mind standing up? Because you know Yes, I don't can. look at your friends, don't look at your Sing husband, don't look at your I wife. If you are able to stand, Sing would you stand? I want to and still because it's not, uh, it's not what we do, it's, it's who we are that He needs. And as we give ourselves to Him, He will teach us how to do those things. So we are not thriving to do things right. The right way, we are thriving to give our whole heart and mind and soul to Jesus so that He can transform us and we can forgive our friends, we can forgive, we can forgive our enemies, we can love our enemies just because of that experience. Because worship is more than a song and the only one who deserves worship is God. It's not your TV, it's not your internet, it's not your phone, it's not your girlfriend, it's not your boyfriend, it's not your spouse, it's not your children, it's not money, it's not power, it's not fame. The only thing that matters and that deserves worship is God, the creator of the universe. Pharaoh, the greatest king of that time, had to kneel down before God because he is great and greatly to be praised. So you have a plan. God has a plan for your life. No matter how old you are, you think, oh, I'm this old. Maybe it's time for me. But God has a plan for you. And that plan is to bring hope in your life so that He can snatch you out of whatever situation you're in and bring you safe back to Him. Home, home at last. Home, home at last. Well, the real freedom exists. Well, the real paradise exists. And set the sound and lights ablaze If that's the measure you must take To crush the end I feel like I need to make another call right now And not just that I feel But I know That I need to make another call right now Some of you have been I've been contemplating on Deciding to give your whole to Jesus Through baptism Yes, I'm going to dare and make that call today because I feel and I know that some of you here have contemplated 
to give your heart to Jesus. And as I'm, I'm making this call, let the other members pray at the same time. You know, pray silently so that that person, that, that, that friend of ours will decide today. I'm, I'm going to ask you to, to come here and I'll be, uh, let me go down here. I'll, I'll be here waiting for you. This is the time. If you, it, 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 sometimes you will not feel it. Sometimes you will not understand it. But it doesn't matter as long as you know that it's God who is calling you. I'm not calling you today. Actually, I'm told to call you today. I received a text this morning from God that He wants you. I text Him back, Why me, Lord? Do I have to make this call? He said, Yes. Through FaceTime. It's your time. It's this time. Right now. Right here. Things might not change as fast as we want to, but it's right now. Come on up here. Come on up here. If you really know that Jesus is calling you. You know, when, 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 when this call happens, it's like, and, and we are taking more time today, but when, when this call happens, it's like, should I go, should I not go, I, I, I'm afraid, what, what, are the other, what, what are the others will think about me, or there are so many reasons not to come here. If you know that you want to give your life to Jesus, no matter how young you are, no matter how old you are, He wants you, all of you, all of you. Thank you, Enoch. Come on here, Enoch. Jesus loves you. Amen, church. Enoch has been contemplating for a while to give his life to Jesus. And Enoch, you're standing here, and I know it's tough to stand here in front of everybody, but you're standing here because you want to give your life to Jesus. Not because your mom wants to, <laughs> but because you want to. And Jesus is seeing your decision right now. If there is still some more, if there is still some more to join Enoch and myself here up here, there's still some more. Maybe one more. Maybe one more. Yes, sister. What's your name again? Kim. Kim. Sister Kim has been coming to church for a while now, and I'm glad you are here. I'm glad you're standing right now, and you're standing here because you know, not just because you feel, but you feel and know. And he's calling you. Is there one more? Is there one more? This is important. Pastor, we're going to pray for these people, Pastor. We're going to pray for these people. Oh, yes. Yes, Mikhail. Amen, church. Mikhail, Mikhail has been studying for a while. Where is Chuck? Yes, Chuck has stepped out, but Chuck has been studying with Mikhail, and Mikhail has, has been waiting for his redness. Come on, come on, come on here, come on here. The church has heard that he would like to recon reconciliate with the Lord today, him and his son. What's your name again? Well, he hasn't accepted the Lord yet, but I'm guiding him. Okay, to. okay. Someday he will. What's your name again? Byron. Byron and Isaac, right? Isaac. Isaac. Yes, Joseph. We've been working on finding days to study with Joseph, and he's ready to study and, and ready to give his life to Jesus as young as he is. He's certain, and he has some questions, tons of questions, and I am the one who has to give an answer somehow, but he is ready. He is ready to give his life to Jesus, and we're going to study. Is there anyone else? One more, one more person, one more person. One more person. Church, this is a great day today. You might have given your life to Jesus back, back maybe decades ago or, or a few years ago through baptism, but today you've renewed your commitment because you've experienced something different, not just feeling, not just with emotions, but with knowledge and emotion and your whole entire body and soul and mind know that Jesus is calling you. Pastor, would you mind praying for, this, for these uh, uh, friends of ours here? I'm going to give you this mic, Pastor. Pastor Neri, or senior pastor here. This, this, is, this is an exciting moment. An exciting moment. 
Look at these people. Look at these faces, and and promise yourself that you will you will do your part. That uh, that God has called you to be a part of this family. I know you're standing for a while now, but God has called you to be a part of this family because you are the big sister or or a mother or for these people, and they will need you. They will need your prayer. They will need your guidance. They will need probably sometimes your hug, sometimes your smile, or maybe all the time your smile. <laughs> maybe sharing some of your problems with. They need you. Look at them. Remember them. And ask them. What's their name? Get to know them. Get get close to them. No matter how old they are. I mean, no, no matter the age, age the gap. Just talk to them. Say, hey, I want to be with you in heaven. Let 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 just you know get to know each other. Yes, brother Mark. Pastor. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for this moment. I I was so touched by the fact you sent Pastor Need a text this morning, and I believe it, Lord. And now we see the fruit of your prompting. The Spirit has been working. And individuals up front here, as well as some who are still standing in the congregation, have been drawn closer to you and to a decision to stand firm and faithful. And so, Lord, I pray a very special blessing on this congregation today, and these individuals up front especially. That you will seal their decision by imparting the Holy Spirit and heavenly angels. For Satan is certainly angry, and he will try to steal the seeds out of their heart. Don't let him do it, Lord. We're praying a prayer of hedge around each one, just the way you promise in Psalms 34:7, that an angel of the Lord will encamp around them. Who love him and deliver them, and when Satan comes, you will chase him away. For we know your coming is soon, and we want to be ready for it. So pour out your Spirit now, in behalf of each person who has decided, and those who are still contemplating, and dismiss us with your presence, Lord, that we will know. No matter how we feel, you are seeking us. Thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.